Hi, I'm John Davison, the director of the Tangier American Legation Institute for Moroccan Studies, and welcome to the Tangier American Legation. Uh, the Tangier American Legation is the United States' oldest continuously occupied diplomatic property. It was a gift from Sultan Muley Suleiman to the United States in 1821, and the legation served as the United States' principal diplomatic mission in Morocco until Morocco attained independence in 1956. Uh, it briefly served as a language, Arabic language training center for American diplomats, uh, for Peace Corps volunteers, and then in 1976, some friends of the American legation, including American diplomats, including American residents of Tangier and some American scholars, uh, successfully persuaded the State Department not to sell the building of the legation, but rather to rent it to an association that had the vision of creating a museum that, were, that would honor Moroccan-American friendship and history. So I can tell you a little bit about who we are. We are a museum, uh, an inclusive museum that celebrates Moroccan friendship in our programming and in our exhibitions. We also are, you may not know this, a national landmark of the United States and Morocco. We're the only national landmark. Uh, we achieved that status in 1982. Um, we're the only national landmark of the United States located outside the United States and its current or former territories. We are primarily, as you know, a museum, um, but we're also a community and neighborhood center. We're located in the old Medina of Tangier, so we sponsor programming related to historic preservation of the old Medina uh, in partnership with a Moroccan historical preservation organization. We offer women's Arabic and economic literacy programming to women who live in our neighborhood of the old Medina. We offer youth language and arts education to youth from the old Medina, but also arts education to youth from new neighborhoods of Tangier. And we offer other community service programs. We're a cultural venue for performances by uh, international artists, but especially by young Moroccan artists. And as you can perhaps see behind me, uh, we're a research center and a research library. We are the Tangier American Legation Institute for Moroccan Studies, but we also are part of the American Institute of Maghreb Studies, AIMS, that arranges exchange programs for U.S. and North African scholars. A little bit more about our history to start with. The uh, presence of the American consulate in Morocco uh, in the 19th century was fairly modest. Uh, we do have, uh, you may not know, the oldest, longest standing diplomatic relationship that the United States has with another country is with Morocco. Uh, it, it was the first country to recognize uh, American independence during the revolution, our commercial independence to be more precise. We have a treaty of friendship from the 1780s. That's the oldest existing uh, treaty of friendship the United States has with another country. And as I mentioned, we have the oldest diplomatic mission here in Tangier. But it's a small diplomatic mission, as you can see from this image, uh, of the legation um, before. It does not look like that at all now. But during the 19th century, some interesting things happened that have some relevance today. Um, the the uh, first daughter to arrive to join her father, who was heading the legation, was found herself trapped in quarantine in Gibraltar for two months on the way to, um, to Morocco. Um, the American diplomats, along with other diplomats in Tangier, very frequently reported on epidemics and pandemics from the, in the 19th century, and again, not here in Tangier uh, as far as diplomats are concerned, but obviously the pandemic remains an issue that um, was very much on the minds of international diplomats two centuries ago. The, uh, some small anecdotes about 19th century American diplomatic history that relate to the topic of inclusiveness. Um, we, um, we, we played a modest but important role in liberating uh, a slave, an American slave 
who came from the Futa Jalon region of West Africa. His name was um, Abdurrahman uh, Ibn Suri, and he was a slave. And President John Quincy Adams was very, who was, I believe, the first um, abolitionist, openly abolitionist president of the United States, was eager to arrange for his return to West Africa, and he needed the sponsorship of an African leader in order to arrange for the repatriation, and he sought, through the legation, patronage by the King of Morocco, who agreed, uh, and uh, Abdurrahman Ibn Suri did leave the United States en route uh, to Africa. He arrived in uh, Liberia. Unfortunately, he did not make it back to the Futa Jalon, but nevertheless, uh, he died in Liberia. But nevertheless, it's a small but an important story in the history of slavery in the United States and its small connection um, to Morocco. Also, in the Civil War, um, whereas the United States had supported, uh, I'm sorry, Morocco had supported the right of U.S. Uh, ships to free navigation uh, during our revolution, at our request, Morocco did not support the right of Confederate ships to freely navigate uh, in Moroccan waters. Um, in the 20th century, the, the legation assumed a much greater importance during the lead up to the Second World War, during the war itself and following the war, um, when again the legation played a small but important role in helping um, the Sultan of Morocco, Mohammed V, uh, take a trip to Tangier in 1947 to deliver a speech um, calling for uh, independence um, and self and self determination for Morocco at a time when Morocco was under the dual protectorates of France and Spain. The uh, at independence, as I mentioned, the legation did, no longer was the most important diplomatic mission in Morocco because every country built their embassies in Rabat. Uh, the legation ceased to be a diplomatic uh, consular building in 1961, and for about 10 years, 13 years, it was a, a language training center first for American diplomats, they studied Arabic, and then for Peace Corps volunteer trainees who studied French and Arabic. They were trainees who were going to serve both in Arabic-speaking countries and in Francophone African countries. The State Department was going to close the legation and sell it and in 1976, a group of friends of the legation, including State Department diplomats, ambass former ambassadors, uh, Americans resident in Tangier, and some American academics, persuaded the State Department to not sell the building, instead to allow an association to create a museum. And uh, we now are a museum that welcomes, on a good, in a good pre-pandemic year, we welcomed over 30,000 visitors to our uh, to our museum, uh, almost oh I'd say easily two thirds of whom uh, are Moroccan, which matter to who matter to us the most, um, and our museum celebrates Ameri Moroccan American diplomatic history, but it's also an art museum that uh, that has collections of both expatriate art much of it in the sort of Orientalist style, as well as 20th century Moroccan art. And you're looking at, uh, at the gallery, which also served as the dining room of the legation, which features and which, which really highlights um, 20th century Moroccan artists. The uh, museum also includes exhibits about the uh, American and international literary and artistic tradition of Morocco during the... Um, period that Tangier was under the international zone, uh, in addition to authors very much associated with Morocco, such as Paul Bowles, um, other American authors, um, I should say Paul Bowles and his wife, Jane Bowles, uh, other important American authors, such as Patricia Highsmith, Claude McKay of the Harlem Renaissance, Tennessee Williams, many uh, authors from the Beat Generation, also traveled to Tangier during the during and after the International Zone period, and many of them wrote about their experiences in Tangier. The uh, museum, as I mentioned, offers, we offer visits 
from all sorts of um, clients, uh, all sorts of visitors during the uh, pandemic. We had to meet pandemic restrictions and and uh, dress safely. We uh, had spe we have special exhibits in the museum. Here's an here's a photo from an exhibit that was from three years ago of Sephardic um, traditions and um, costumes and traditions of Sephardic Morocco. This was a collection of uh, wedding and wedding related dresses of the Sephardic, of Morocco's um, Sephardic Jewish community who had their base mostly in northern Morocco as they were expelled from Spain along with um, Muslims in the Moors um, under the reign of, um, reigns of Ferdinand and Isabella. Um, we have, we use the museum to do a lot of outreach activities. The obvious outreach activities are, uh, are two uh, visiting groups of Moroccans, and in particular, uh, Moroccan students um, and uh, Moroccan, uh, Moroccan community groups from Tangier. The, uh, we, we offer free admission to public school groups, um, and we offer free tours to, to youth uh, and children from Moroccan public schools whereas we do charge admission to, to tourists and to, uh, to uh, youth from uh, private schools. We, we really try to focus our outreach on public school, um, public school youth. As I mentioned, here's just part in our museum. As soon as you walk in, you'll note that we are a national landmark. And as I mentioned, we're a national landmark of two countries. Uh, in 2015, Morocco designated the legation, put us on its national bulletin of uh, historic properties. And I believe we might be the only national landmark of two countries. Um, we're a research center. We have a research library, but we're a research center. We sponsor lots and lots of talks about um, themes mostly related to Morocco and North Africa. N all, many of them are historical, but they're not uniquely historical. Um, they can be, uh, we've had talks about migration from um, West Africa, uh, to Morocco. We've had colloquia on movement and migration between West Africa and Morocco. We've had uh, talks about signing uh, language, deaf signing language in the, um, in the, um, uh, in the Arab world. And uh, we have um, had seminars as well about themes related to uh, various groups uh, connected to Morocco. In the case of what you're looking at, we had, we, our 2019 seminar were, was about Jews and Judaism in Moroccan society. We run a literacy program in partnership with our historic preservation partners for women who live in Tangiers Old Medina. Since its creation in 1999, over 1,500 women have learned Arabic and economic literacy and numeracy, and some of them have studied uh, embroidery, baking, even French and sometimes Spanish or English. We have begun in the last five years a much more assertive youth outreach program to the city of Tangier. The city of Tangier is Morocco's fastest growing city and most of the newcomers to Tangier are internal migrants from rural and mountainous regions of Morocco as well as migrants from other parts of Africa. Here's a nice photo during the pandemic of, uh, of, a, vi of a visiting group from an, of an outlying neighborhood of, of uh, a youth association from an outlying neighborhood of Tangier that supports youth who meet uh, from all of those categories of people. Uh, we, are a, we have cultural outreach. What you're looking at now is a concert series that we call She Stage uh, that was, began with live performances that were so popular of featuring Moroccan singers, songwriters. So, uh, our hashtag is support Moroccan artists. They were so popular that people would take trains up from Casablanca or Morocco just to attend concerts in our museum. And we were even named just a couple of months before the pandemic as one of the best live music venues in Morocco. Afterwards, of course, everything changed with the pandemic. We changed our social media presence to focus on uh, issues related to Moroccan American friendship. Again, we hosted social talk, uh, social media talks on on the Black Lives Matter movement. We hosted um, concerts, uh, live stream concerts, some of which had almost a hundred thousand views. Um, 
And in the middle of the pandemic, we had to celebrate and plan our own bicentennial because this year we turned 200 years old. And all the planning we had for public events, we had to switch to pandemic events. Uh, we did host an April seminar that was, of course, a hybrid April seminar on the, on the bicentennial with all but uh, two participants joining us virtually, but it included a, a doctoral workshop for Moroccan uh, doctoral candidates who were able to travel to Tangier to, to present their research in a workshop format. We hosted, uh, the American Embassy uh, hosted an event. They are our landlords, so it was their right to do so. It's their building. And they hosted an event that in, included the governor, the Wali of um, uh, Tangier. And before they gave the talks and the speeches, the first thing they did was meet with the women from the neighborhood who were studying Arabic in our literacy program. Uh, we created a virtual tour as part of the pandemic response, which uh, I'll share the link with you uh, at the end of the talk. Uh, so you're all welcome to visit and uh, visit us virtually. We uh, had specific workshops. The first events after we opened were all safety and hygiene workshops related to the pandemic. We did it both for women from the neighborhood as well as youth from the neighborhood. And it was all about safety and hygiene. We conducted webinars and other online conferences, as I mentioned. And as part of our bicentennial celebration, uh, we had normally, we'd done neighborhood um, association workshops and performances. But this year, we had to do pandemic uh, performances that are on video. Um, and uh, this particular image is not from the legation, it's from another historic site in the, in the Old Medina of Tangier, which happens to be a military space that has been in the most magical Tangier way, converted into a space for artists and who get free rent in exchange for providing uh, free workshops to, um, uh, to youth from the Old Medina. And our partners from the uh, Mumkin Artistic Cooperative are lucky enough to have part of this historic space and this was part of the workshop that we sponsored them to do that was jointly shared at the legation and at the, um, and at the uh, art space itself. Uh, for the uh, bicentennial, the day after the bicentennial happened to be International Museums Day, and we hosted an outdoor performance on our rooftops. You can't see it, but we have many rooftop terraces, and uh, we invited our guests who were all from the neighborhood, and we had to restrict the number of guests um, to sit on different terraces of the um, of, of our uh, compound and um, to watch two days of performances by the Mumkin Arts Cooperatives and some of the youth from these same neighborhood associations that they had done workshops in. Those are also been live streamed and are available on YouTube. So I think that's about it. Um, what I would very much like you all to do, if it's possible, is to come to Tangier and see us in person. Um, my email address is director at legation.org. I will be leaving shortly, but I'm going to be replaced by a wonderful woman and friend, a former diplomat named Jennifer Rasamamanana. I'm sure if she were here in Tangier, she arrives shortly, she'd be wanting me to pass on her greetings as well. So if you're in Tangier and you can come across, please visit the legation. And if you have any ideas about how we could include into our program more about inclusiveness, we really would welcome your suggestions. Thank you very much.